<laughs> hey, it is Friday, May 31st. I'm just getting ready to head to work, actually, but it's, you know, uh, the weekend before I get into that courthouse again on Monday. And uh, it's going to be a long weekend, I'm guessing, <laughs> because... Yeah, she lives right next door to me. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not looking forward to arguing with my next door neighbor about money first thing on Monday morning. So it's going to be a long weekend. i got to avoid her. And, uh, well, you know, I'm placing bets as to whether or not she actually shows up to that courthouse on Monday morning. But in the meantime, yeah. I'm heading to work, and I'm going to do everything I can this weekend to not be visible to my next-door neighbor. Hey, it is uh, June 2nd, Sunday night. It's the night before I get into that courtroom against my neighbor and her grandson, and it's that debtor hearing. And, um, you know, knowing her ammo, I'm, I'm keeping my ears and eyes peeled to see if, for some reason last-ditch effort, maybe an uh, ambulance shows up so that she doesn't have to show up in that courtroom tomorrow. <laughs> I, you know, I could be wrong, I, but I do know her M.O. Maybe she'll show up. But uh, if an ambulance shows up tonight, I'll know why she's not there tomorrow, right? <laughs> yeah, she's a little on the predictable side, but like I said, maybe she'll show up. But no matter what, uh, my goal for tomorrow is to get some answers to some questions that I need to have answered. In particular, how does she intend on paying me the money she owes? And, uh, I need to let her know, of course, that if she doesn't pay me, that that will put her grandson liable to have to pay her debt. So maybe she won't want to put that on him. But, like I said, if I haven't learned anything from my next-door neighbor, is she is not a person who wants to pay any of her debts, let alone, <laughs> you know, uh, the one she owes me. So, um, yeah, <laughs> and I'm going to make sure that the judge has, like, uh, somebody, uh, hopefully maybe a court reporter or over somebody monitoring that questions between her and I so that it's on under oath, on on record, whatever it is that she says, just because. I, I think I need to have it on record, whatever it is she says. Hey, good morning. <laughs> yes, it is June 3rd, and it's actually a really gray, cloudy day out there. But uh, I am headed over to the courthouse. I don't know what's going to happen because I've never, I guess, conducted a, a debtor's hearing before. But uh, I'm going to be there. I don't know if the defendants will be, but I will find out shortly. And I'm going to ask the judge to make sure somebody else is in that room with us. <laughs> just to be on the safe side, you know. Okay, I just got here. I'm cutting it really close, but their vehicle is here, so it looks like it's a go. <laughs> I could have just slept in, you know. <laughs> Saved 120 bucks. Basically, I got no information that I needed or wanted other than the defendants had indeed changed their checking account. But actually, they didn't change it. They just closed it and reopened it. So I just left the sheriff and filed a, another, I guess, bank levy. And outside of that, who knows, right? <laughs> uh. All right, it's almost noon, almost time for lunch. Yeah, totally, almost a complete waste of money and time today because, you know, it cost 120 bucks, and we had to do this, like, a mediation thing. That's where we did the appearance and examination debtor's hearing, and um, not in front of the judge, you know, but um, <laughs> and she would not give me any information I asked for. But I did manage to at least find out that she had closed her account and then um, the grandson reopened the account. So it's under his name now. So I ran straight to the sheriff <laughs> and 
gave him another 40 bucks. I want him to try and seize that account. And she put in, of course, a, an exemption, whatever, claiming that she's, you know, just piss poor broke. And yeah, okay, so what? <laughs> it doesn't, as far as I'm concerned, give you a reason to go out and just create harm. Uh, just being mean to people, you know, just, it's like opening up a credit card, maxing it out, and then no intentions of paying it at all, basically. <laughs> but yeah, so um, the the judge pretty much told me that she wasn't required to give me her driver's license, and then the judge told me that I basically, you know, could be sitting in the same chair that John Nelson was sitting in, which is I have to wait 10 years to renew that judgment, if need be. And then after that, I would have to like completely sue all over again because it's only good for 20 years. <laughs> yeah, this woman and her grandson, I even told her, you know, if you don't pay this debt, it all falls on his shoulders. And she's like, yeah, he ain't gonna pay it either. <laughs> well, and another thing, you know, I, I even expressed to, uh, Miss Crosno and her grandson that I had to pay 120 bucks for this hearing, so I wanted some information. They go, that was your choice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like I said, um, and then I, I tried to ask about the truck that was removed from the driveway, the one I saw leave on that tow truck, her, her son's truck, and she told me that, no, it, it's not with the sheriff, that uh, she actually had it towed away to get some repairs on it for him <laughs> because she can't register it in the tow truck company or she danced around it and her son or grandson excuse me defendant number two he revealed that he only has a learner's permit he's had a learner's permit for two years and he's driving her vehicle all by himself all the time now that's not legal right <laughs> oh my god but yeah basically she and the grandson looked me in the eyes laughing the whole time and she showed up in a wheelchair and I'm like I got you on video walking just fine yesterday in front of my house Ugh. anyway yeah definitely the both of them they, <laughs> yeah they, I'm just a little frustrated because nothing really got accomplished but I did manage to pay the sheriff an additional 40 bucks today while I was here and sent him after the grandson's checking account since it's been put in his name instead. And yeah, that'll probably be in vain too, but uh, I had to do something while I was in this courtroom today. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I'm a bit frustrated to say the least. Yeah, I'm back home and uh, just did a little shopping to just blow off my thoughts. <laughs> but I, really, truly, it's hard to set aside the thought that as the plaintiff, as the victim, who just spent a year and a half in the court system, 12 different courtroom appearances, spent over $2,400, only to be told that, you know, basically I did all of that and it doesn't matter that the criminal, the defendant, is not required <laughs> to give me their driver's license because apparently I'm untrustworthy <laughs> as the plaintiff. I don't know. I just know that uh, I, I'm wondering why I even bothered to sue. I, I think people should take into consideration that... Uh, you know, yeah, even if you win, you can't enforce the defendants to pay. And the judge did say that I can't enforce them to make monthly payments. And she and the grandson looked me in the eye, literally in front of the mediator and said, I'm not going to pay you. <laughs> and neither is the grandson. I'm like, well, no, the grandson will have to pay if you don't pay. She's like, nope, you can't force us to pay. <laughs> we know how not to do it. And she came in there in a wheelchair after walking just fine yesterday. I, like I said, I, I really do question the court process. 
the court system. It, it seems that there should be some way that they could force the defendants to pay, but apparently not. So, yeah. Good thing I put that lien on the house. It may take 20 years to, to get that money, but that, that lien's there at this point. 